I got to say, New Amsterdam Radio is brought to you part by Anchor FM. Have you ever thought about making your own podcast? You see, when I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? And most importantly, I don't want to deal with cables and wires and all those things. You see, the answer to every single one of these questions is pretty simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And you can use your phone, which is pretty awesome. Now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. So if you ever wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Yes, once again, it's New Amsterdam Radio, the podcast for creatives. How's everyone doing? It's Flobo Voice here, another week inside the confines of my apartment. Like most of us, we're hashtag staying at home, but that doesn't mean the world stops. That doesn't mean uh, we just sit on our hands and wait for something cool to come along. We go out there, we create, we make things happen. And one of the things I love about New Amsterdam Radio is that even though it's I say it's a podcast for creatives and we're in this fictional city of people with ideas and we're all citizens, a lot of times it really comes down to the practice of it all, right? Are we really creating? Are we really doing? Well, my guest today is doing Dr. Anna Claire Hodge. Actually, uh, I had a very deep conversation about her for with a new project she's working on and other things. And I think you guys will enjoy it because not only has she has a very, very drilled down approach to her craft, in this case, creative writing, her outlook on life is something we all can all draw from. For those of us who ever had a change of scenery whether we wanted to or not so uh, in a minute next we check that out but if you can please follow me over at twitter at flobo voice or follow me on instagram at flobito and of course flobito.com is a website and if you want to support this guy as i go around my journey as a creator himself uh please support by buying a t-shirt over at flobito.threadless.com i do have a patreon uh patreon.com slash flobo voice uh the interview today with dr hodge is is it's cool, but it's condensed. So if you want to hear the unabridged interview, make sure you become a patron over at patreon.com slash voice. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Hey everyone, welcome back to New Amsterdam Radio. Citizens, this podcast is for you. You know, creatives are always trying to find a way to take the world around them and to recontextualize what that means for their creative projects. Uh, I have a very, very special guest. Fantabulous. Can I stupendous, even. <laughs> uh, Dr. Anna Claire Hodge, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, Sobo. How are you? You know, I'm doing pretty well. I know that you have a long history of creating things with the written word and spoken word. Uh, I just want to get into a lot of that stuff today. Is that okay? Love to talk about it. That'd be great. Okay. Let's go back in time to this morning, right? Got up, <laughs> did my, my, my most manly version of yoga yet, uh, scrolling Instagram, and I came across that you had a spoken word EP available on, so for me, Spotify, but also iTunes as well. Uh, tell me what that is and how it came about. Sure. So it's, it's interesting because it's not really considered spoken word. Um, you know, the lit community has a lot of different ways to um, describe poetry. So it's actually just poetry being read out loud, which you'd think is spoken word, but it's, it's not actually the same. And if you ask me to tell you why, I can't. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've not had enough sugar-free Red Bulls for that today. But um, So it's a chat book, um, which is kind of like a mini book that a lot of authors publish before their full-length collection comes out. Um, and they often have some sort of thematic connection. Uh, mine is called Instructions, and it's just seven poems, but they're all linked because each title begins with instructions for blank, whatever it is. Um, 
And they're all written in a voice that's kind of telling someone how to do something. But the twist is that they're subjects that aren't necessarily built for like instruction manuals. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, the the opener instructions for the good girl is all about like how to be a good Southern woman. And a lot of it is just advice given to me by my mother. Now, you'd think that maybe it's like, this is how to make biscuits and, you know, don't kiss boys, but it, it goes a little further than that. Kind of explore some racism, classism, you know, um, it's all over the place. So, yeah, I mean, it, it feels like a, a how to be Anna Claire, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Uh, it's a very cool theme, instructions, and, and literally you deliver, right? It says there in the 10 different kinds of instructions. This track listing, uh, can I call it that then? If it's Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like, they are tracks. It's just, it happens to be poems. Yeah. That hit right in the, right in the heart and soul. Uh, Good Girl, you mentioned, Family Weekend. One of my favorite ones, though, uh, and the reason why I hit you up today, I was like, whoa, you know, was uh, instructions for the host. Because I don't know about you, but I am the worst at throwing parties. And so <laughs> that that particular track transcended to me. I actually started experiencing it as if a good friend was telling me the actual instructions of making that happen. Uh, oh, just really? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. But then the tone of, of, your, of your performance is almost like I couldn't tell if it was like you helping me out or you being disdainful on your own. I thought that was a lot of things to reap from. Oh, man. That's a great question. So I, I just read them as I normally would read them if I were doing a live poetry reading. Um, so I like to slow the poems down. You know, you don't want to rush through them and you really want to honor each word that you've chosen to write because you took your time with it, right? Most poems go through a ton of revisions, um, word choice, and, and the way uh, the music of the poetic line sounds is really important to me. So I keep it slow. Uh, which, you know, kind of is juxtaposed the idea of like a party getting a little raucous maybe, right? Um, but also like there's a line in there that says you will want to remember how happy you seemed. And I think that line is a, is a real turning point for the poem because it allows the reader or the listener in this case yeah. to consider the fact that just because someone is performing happiness – and performing being in control of their life, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are. Absolutely. And I learned how to host or be a hostess rather. I, I don't know what the woke way to say it, a host. <laughs> you know, uh, my mother, my mother throws incredible parties. Um, and, you know, my mother appears a lot in this chat book just because she was such a huge influence on my life and still is. What kind of parties? Like ragers, uh, grilling, cookouts, cotillions? Uh, well, like what? <laughs> I, lo I love that variety. Um, man, she can do it all. Let's see. Um, I bet she threw ragers back in the day because this is a really cool thing about my mom that you wouldn't know unless I told you, but she used to be a rock and roll promoter and she owned uh, a music venue in downtown Orlando and had all these rock stars come through, like B.B. King, The Police, The Ramones, The Go-Go's, you name it. So um, she and I were talking about the, the 1970s uh, a little while back. Uh, and so I bet she threw some ragers then. <laughs> um, but, you know, she, as far as parties, I just mean everything is like, whether it was like a teddy bear picnic for my sister, like a birthday party, or, you know... Uh, a 40th birthday party for a friend where they all perform skits, you know, every detail is seen to, which metaphorically kind of works with poetry because when you're writing a poem, you don't just scribble it down and send it off to be published. Mm -hmm. It's something that takes time and detail reworking over and over, whether it's, you know, coming up for a menu for a dinner party, that's not something that you just come up with really quickly and then, no, you think about it. You know, you weigh it over. You let it, oh, forgive this terrible pun, but you let it marinate. Um, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just grew up watching her and watching her be just so in control of certain situations and really admiring that. But also, I always want to pull back the curtain on performance yeah. uh, because as a teacher, as a writer, as, you know, someone who's really active on social media, like I perform all the time. All of us are, right? I would so, say so. So that instructions for the host poem was about, 
you know, you, you know all the right things to do, right? You know every step that needs to be taken. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have everything that you want. Well, let's talk about uh, the, how you got this actually recorded. Uh, I know we're in a time of quarantine and, and, and lockdown. Did you do it at home or did you have to go to a studio? I mean, how so, does that process work? So this was recorded in my living room. Uh, yeah, but it was a uh, pre quar So this was, I think we recorded in January. Um, and then uh, my editor, Mark, it's his series. He runs the series, which is called Eat Poetry, which, of course, I love because I'm a snack monster. But, um, yeah, he asked me to record it. We we put the poems in the can, and we've been sitting on them for a while. And he had to edit the audio, you know, get it perfect. And then, uh, yeah, so got a final release date. And, yeah, so I, I've known this was going to happen for a while. I've just kept really quiet about it mm-hmm. uh, just because... I never want to jinx anything, right? And then you don't want people to get sick of a project before you've even released it. <laughs> I've done that before, for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. So you're just up in your living room, like Post Malone, old school style, just making it happen. <laughs> SoundCloud. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I called it the lab. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we just did it at my dining room table. Um, and he had a little audio set up and it was great. And, you know, I'm very used to public speaking and recording. I've done podcasts and stuff like that. So... Uh, we got it done really quickly. I was pretty proud of that. So let's talk about the choir, as you call it. Uh, first of all, where did the name come from? And second of all, how has that affected you and your creative process? Oh, well, I'm so glad you asked. I've had a lot of thoughts about this. So I call it the choir because um, I am a total fangirl for an L.A.-based podcast called The Daily Zeitgeist. I know I told you about this already um, when we first met, but... So uh, Jamie Loftus, who's a recurring guest and a comedian in L.A., uh, she calls it Quar. And I just I find her so fascinating that uh, I just want to do everything that she does. And it makes me laugh. And I think it annoys all my friends, which makes me laugh even harder. (laughs) And, you know, at this point, we got to get our kicks where we can get them, you know. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But um, so I don't know. Quarantine is actually... I should say I'm coming from a real place of privilege because my job just moved online. So I still have a paycheck. I can pay my bills. So what has changed for me is just like spending a lot more time at home and not gathering in groups. And I don't know, it's going really well. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I I don't know what I would do without my dog. Um, I am not writing. Mm -hmm. I wrote like half of one poem. And I think, uh, the it's that hustle culture again like now is a good time to learn arabic and i'm like no (laughs) just like you know i have um what i jokingly refer to as a broken brain like um i have major depressive disorder and sometimes i have panic attacks i'm medicated i see you know a, a therapist it's well regulated and under control um and it's not something I'm ashamed of, but I do have to be careful sure. um, because leaning in one direction or the other could, uh, you know, tip the scales in a way that that's not good. So um, I don't know, trying, I just don't want to feel like I have to force myself to do anything except complete my job responsibilities as a professor, you know, get enough exercise, eat decent meals, sleep, read play with my dog um you know basic responsibilities as long as those are taken care of anything else is a bonus that's the way that i see it um but uh i mean i do feel creative i feel really creative um just not necessarily writing poems uh we'll be seeing more of your content on the eat poem series or is this like one and done that is a one and done, but I um, I do have a poem in an anthology that was just released today. Uh, the anthology is called Turn It Up, Music and Poetry from Jazz to Hip Hop. And uh, my poem is about Biggie's funeral in bed uh, Let's see. What else? I've got some other stuff. I've got, yeah, I've... Th- I'm doing a TV spot later in the week. Um, so yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of stuff on deck. I will be annoying all of my followers. Um, <laughs> it, it, for me, this is usually how it happens where I'll have like five or six projects all come out at once. Yeah. And I'm sure I just seem like r- just a very annoying self 
self-promotion monster but yeah that's the way it goes dropping content like beyonce uh <laughs> <laughs> secret album <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, oh thank you so much for being on the show uh i want you back here in the future because i want to see all these projects and your process behind them but in the meantime where can the world find you online Ooh, the world can find me uh on instagram at to thine own self be trill uh if you type in anna claire it'll probably pop up for you uh, www.annaclairehodge.com where you can see uh, some of my published work, other podcasts that I've done, stuff like that. Um, where else? Yeah, Spotify. My album is on Spotify right now, Apple Music. You can buy a copy on Amazon or you can stream it for free at eatwords.net. Um, yeah, I, that's a lot of places to find me. Uh, just don't come to my house, you know, social distancing. <laughs> okay, it's good to know. Good advice. Uh, until next time, of course, it's New Amsterdam Radio, and this city is yours. That was a lot of fun. Dr. Hodge is quickly becoming one of my favorite people on the planet, which I understand there are billions of people on that planet, but she's getting up there. (laughs) Make sure you follow her uh, and see what she's working on in the future. As for me, this is all the time we have for this edition of New Amsterdam Radio. You know what? If you love the show, tell a friend about it. Comment. Uh, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I want to make sure this this and all the other episodes are really tailored to you, the creators, the doers, and how you approach your own craft. My name is Flobo Boys. You can follow me on Twitter at Flobo Boys or on Instagram at Flobito and of course Flobito.com. I finally have some new designs of my uh, t-shirt line at Flobito.threadless.com. And if you want to hear the unabridged interview with Dr. Han, that's available at Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Flobo Boys. Uh, please support and donate if you can. And until next time, as always, this city is yours. <laughs>